and now you said no, uh, in bloom the in bloom video is like a, it's the beginning of an answer to all that even to to mtv or to the whole uh video uh, universe mm. hmm. i'm not really sure because I, I'm not. I'm not really opposed to videos. I don't. I don't. I don't hate them. Uh, sometimes they're fun to do. Especially that video was fun to do because it only took us six hours. Right. Normally a video will take it the whole day, just like right. over and over and over. We only had to listen to the song like four times, and it was great. So it was really great to be able to do that, and it was totally spontaneous. Um, Courtney. Um, had brought some dresses with her. She was taking them to a friend's house, or she no, she had borrowed some dresses from a friend of hers. And so I thought, hey, let's put some dresses on and, you know, dance around in those. And that was just, you know, everything was just pretty much spontaneous. The 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 basic idea was just to, um, you know, do a video that looked like it came from the early '60s or, or the or the late '50s. Well, but you know? uh, what about the other version that you were marked with suits and all like that? It was it was done in the same day. Yeah. Just you just change your clothes. And yeah, we just change our clothes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and you mentioned that Courtney came with that, those dresses, and she's recording right here. I mean, do you by any chance interfere with what she's doing uh, some in in her work, or how much does one uh, interferes with other works? Um. Yeah, we get in each other's way every once in a while. <laughs> well, well, yeah, but I mean, more uh, more uh, intentional. Uh, we. Well, we we just like to be together all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're best friends. She's my best friend, and so when she's playing music, I like to listen to it and maybe suggest some things. And she does the same thing with me too. And um, she's just this was just an opportunity for her to see. She came with us, and and her and Patty, her drummer, came too. Uh, it's just a vacation, and so this was just a, a, a spontaneous thing for them to just make a, a few demos and. See what they're gonna do with it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, it's rolling. Arnaldo Baptista. Is that how you pronounce his name? That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Where? I said, where, where, where did you hear from them? I mean, how, who told you I tried to look for this band? My friend Bill Bartel. Who is um, he? Has a record label called Gasatanka Records, and he was in White Flag. And he's friends with Red Cross. And he's a very nice guy. He has a mustache, and um, he's a really nice guy. And he and he sent me a tape of the first two records um, a, f a few weeks ago, about a month ago, mm -hmm. and I really liked it. And he said, if you go to Brazil, you have to you have to say to everybody that this is a great band. And I agree with him. I think this is this is a very influential and cool band for the time. How did it sound to you? I mean, does it have a, like a Brazilian? Kind of sound on the background. Yeah, that, there's a lot of Latin impression. rhythms in there in some of this music. Yeah, because they came with this idea that let's mix Brazilian rhythm and rock. And this, uh -huh. this was in the late '60s. So right. Can you can you say some something like typical from Brazil there? Yeah. Oh, definitely. There's some. I, I can hear the the rhythm and the influence in, in in the music a lot. I just I respect them so much. I'm just I'm not familiar with them very much because I've just started getting into mm -hmm. them. But I think. From what I've read about them, they were they were very revolutionary. I mean, they made their own effects boxes, you know. They they made their own fuzz boxes, and and they were also really controversial too. Which was they had a lot of guts to be doing stuff like that in the, in the military um, society that was going on then. And I just think that is so cool. That was know? totally counter culture. Yeah, totally. very. People wouldn't believe what they did. Yeah. Oh, well, it's very cool to like that. And yeah. I hope you enjoy the CDs too. Yeah, I will. And thank you again. All right. Bye. Thanks, John. I'm actually back by Axel Rose's dressing room. He has been on tour with Guns N' Roses for the past year, and they've gotten in all sorts of trouble. Axel is getting very well known for his antics. And I talked to him in Houston, and here's part two of our interview. <laughs> Guns N' Roses has spent the past 15 months on tour playing to sell out crowds and being involved in more than their fair share of controversy. For starters, the band had a little trouble with punctuality, sometimes showing up two hours late for a concert. Axel says it took him a while to get back into the grind of touring. It was a whole change of life. You know, realizing, okay, now we're out on tour, haven't toured, been sitting on my ass at home or whatever. 
I've been out, you know, running around and, and right. rocking out, and had to basically like change my whole life in order to be able to keep doing this. And so, you know, you'd do a show and then you'd be shot, you know, where you'd be kind of like shot for three weeks. But no, you got a show tomorrow. So then it'd take like all these hours of preparation where now it doesn't take me near as long to be ready for right. a show. <laughs> During the course of the tour, Axel has been involved in heavy-duty psychotherapy in an attempt to deal with the sexual abuse he suffered as a child, among other problems. Last year, I was doing extensive emotional work on myself, so when I'd go out to do a show, it'd be, it, you know, if, if something, I was, you know, uncovering something in my unconscious mind or my mind or whatever, and kind of experiencing it, it'd be really hard to go out and do the show, where that took like a year to get things under control. I'd come off stage and either get on the phone or have the person fly out personally and do four or five hours right after stage. And be, you know, where like someone goes like once a week to like work out their problems for like a half hour, an hour, and I was doing four or five hours a day, you know, like every day. Is it helping? <laughs> you show the show, it seems to be fine. I'm in a good mood now. Do you feel like your, your fans sort of are understanding you better or take your problems seriously? I think some people are understanding, but, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, they want what they want, even if they, even if they understand. It's like, you know, if there's a problem on stage and you have to stop the show, they, they don't really care. At that point, you know, they're, they're still upset because they didn't get satiated. They came to see something, and, if, you know, there was technical difficulties in, in Montreal and we had to leave. And the crowd was very upset about that, you know, and they didn't really, like, take the time to, like, think about what went wrong for us. You know, that's kind of hard to take sometimes, I and mean, I, don't, I don't feel responsible for, for that. The ensuing riot in Montreal started after Axel walked off stage and stopped the concert because of a problem with their PA system. Axel says they've been having technical problems the whole tour, and it was damaging his voice. So basically, I was having to, like, sing over... 150 kilowatts of sound or something I didn't do major damage to my vocal cords but I did enough that if I sang anymore under those conditions I wouldn't be singing so in order to hear myself to see if I'm on key and tell how loud or how hard I need to push to sing to sing the song properly I'd have to try to sing over the PA which was impossible after the ride in Montreal, the crew was able to fix the PA problem. But troubles aside, Axel feels like Guns N' Roses pulled off a major feat by putting together a stadium tour with their old friends Metallica. One of the big things I learned was that everybody had wanted this tour so bad and worked so hard to make it to be able to do this tour. You know, Metallica through their touring and through our touring to be able to do a stadium tour together that we thought that when we got here it'd just be perfect, it'd be so cool. Well, it kind of turned out to be that, wait a minute, this is so cool that why shouldn't this be the hardest thing we've ever done? Now, 